All right, now I was <laughs> teaching the last uh, half an hour here, but nothing was happening apparently. So um, I will see if that is working now. Let's see if I can get that. All right, checking on a couple of things. Let me start everything over. I'm going to rewind what I just did and do it all over again. Why not? Maybe I'll do it better this time. Starting fresh. Even have to erase this little thing. All right. Now. Okay. Well. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this day. And I'll just ask you if you're here in my regular sing-song way. Good morning, first grade. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Good morning, dear first grade. It is lovely to be in front of you again today. I hope that you can hear me this time because I tried to do this and now I'm starting again late. But start the day as usual with welcoming this new day and honoring it and committing ourselves to doing our best all day long. How about that? The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The soul with spirit power gives strength, no, the heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light, strength. From us rise love and thanks. Thank you for this day, world. Uh, I used to say the morning verse a little bit differently, and so I'm tripping over some of my words a little bit, so we'll have to see how that works out. Hopefully I'll remember them the way that I'm supposed to. All right, so now we'll write the day and the date up here. Today is Tuesday. T U E S and D A Y spells day. D A. Notice my little lowercase a there? It's the same as in cursive. Y. Two's D A Y spells day. Today's the first day of September, which means it's now officially autumn in my thinking, at least. I'm used to September feeling quite different when the air starts getting colder from where I used to live. But here in Hawaii, things change just so very subtly. But anyway, it's September. S-E-P-T-E-M. Here comes the B, b-b-b-b-b-r. B-E-R. September. September. There's the B. Doesn't look like a the B that we're gonna draw today. But September. September, September 1, September 1st. I think I can fit it over there. September 1st, 2020. And a mark over here so that we can say it's the sixth day of school. We have five plus one is six. We've got the five right there all tied up. And one more. So we have six days of school so far. And this is the year 2020, the year that you start first grade. Actually, it makes it kind of easy for you because next year it will be 2021, and then 2022, and 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And you actually graduate from eighth grade in 2028. So I call you the class of 2028. Um, 
Now we will do our head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And I finally got the words in Hawaiian uh, translated to my satisfaction. I tried to remember the old song that I learned a few years ago. And it's different than the version some of you might know, but it's um, somewhat, somewhat similar. Here we go. In English. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. I hope you're standing up and doing it with me. Otherwise, that's just boring. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Extra fast. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. One last time, slow. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Po, oh, po, oh, heavy, coolie, va, va. Po, oh, po, oh, heavy, coolie, va, va. Po, oh, po, oh, heavy, coolie, va, va. E, malama, coquino. And then we have maka, wa, ha, mana, mana, lima. Maka, wa, ha, mana, mana, lima. Maka wa ha mana mana lima e malama kokino. And then we have i hu ni ho lele kokino. I hu ni ho lele ku kokino. I hu ni ho lele kokino. E malama kokino. So you probably just learned, and you will learn it even better, that maka means eye, waha means mouth, and manalama, mana manalima means fingers. And then we have ihu, and then we have ti, niho, and lele, jump. Lele kokino, jump. And now, ba, 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 let's warm up our lips and our jaw so that we can say our tongue twister. Ba, 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 ba. Can you flutter your lips like a horse? <laughs> can you roll your R? <laughs> That's a tricky one. <laughs> can you say, wee? Open up your mouth wide with a big smile and say, wee and wah. And now shake your jaw and loosen it up. If you can't do that, try it this way. Feel your jaw jumping up and down, relaxing it. Very good. Ready? Ba ba rubber baby buggy bumpers. It's not a rubber baby. It's a rubber baby buggy bumper. So the rubber refers to the bumpers, and the thing in the middle is the baby buggy. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Faster? Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy. Oh, I messed it up. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Say it right one time at the end. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. How many b, b sounds do you hear in there? How many b sounds do you hear? Rubber baby. There's two in that word. Rubber baby b buggy. Oh, buggy b bumpers. I hear five. Rub rubber baby buggy b bumpers. Don't get confused and add an extra one for the. There at the end. That's tricky. All right. We have uh, our form drawing to finish. So hopefully you practiced this yesterday. Get your main lesson book open to the very next blank page. The very next blank page in your main lesson book. And a crayon in your hand. You can start with yellow because yellow is uh, 
lighter, and if you make a mistake, you can do it again in a different color and then make the background into yellow. That's one of my little tricks for fixing mistakes in crayons. In chalk, oh, it's much easier. Here we go. A straight line down like that. Practice a straight line down like that. Practice a curved line around, a curved line around, and now here we go. Start near the top of the page and just take a breath and draw your line. Starting near the top, ending near the bottom. The straight line is there, and now it's time to do the curved line. So I will start over here with my finger. I'll start about that far away. I'll try to get as far away from the middle. I'll try to make my farthest away point right near the middle of this. So if the middle is there, I go out to here, and I think, well, I'm going to curve it to there, and then I'm going to start going back in. So I do that with my finger, or with my eyes, I look at it, I practice, and then I do it. Take a breath and relax. Form drawing is something that adults actually can do also, and it gets more and more complicated as we get older in the grades, and it's, it tends to be pretty fun and somewhat meditative actually which means kind of relaxing in a focused kind of way. Here we go. Try again, the other side. There's my estimation with my finger of where it should go. And then I will start here. And hopefully that it turns out somewhat even. And it turned out pretty even. If yours didn't, well, that's because you just can practice some more. So a straight line and a curve will turn those around and do some different things with them each day uh, this, this week, and then we'll start doing something a little different with our form drawings. So that's that, and now we count to 100, ready? We're gonna count to 100, and then we're gonna count backwards from 10, and then we will try something new today, which is counting by tens to 100. Maybe you've heard of that before, or even think you might know how to do it already, which is great. But first, let's start with the ones, because if you can count to 100 from one without making a mistake, then your next challenge would be to start going backwards. How about that? From 100 to 99, right? Okay, but forwards, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Use your fingers with me. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, only 10 more, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100! <laughs> Yay! All right, now we'll count. Let's count upward to 10 and then backward. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now backwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! <laughs> That's always fun. All right, we did that. Now we'll count forwards by tens all the way to 100. It's a much faster way to get to 100. Instead of counting 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we just start with 10. And each of my fingers will count for 10 instead of 1. Or first we'll do it this way though. I'll say 10 and then add 10 more and say 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And if I want to remember which one comes next, if I can't remember what comes after 50, I can count it this way. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then I see I've got, oh, 660, 70, 80, 90, 100. Hooray! All right, that's counting by 10, so you can practice all that stuff when we're done here throughout your day. And I hear Auntie Jackie at the door. Auntie Jackie. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, here I come. Thank you for coming back. Aloha. Aloha. Well, I can see myself in the doorway like that. Good morning, first graders. I have come from the garden. And I'm greeting Mr. Coulter. Namaste. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, you guys, I've got my garden box together. And I'll tell you a little bit about that if you're wondering. But first, I want to greet you and tell you how things are going. So, I was in the garden this morning. We have a new student in the seventh grade, so she hadn't seen our garden. Took her up there, we waited at the gate, we looked around, and then oh, we took a big breath and we walked around quietly. It was very nice because I was able to start noticing things and I made a collection of things to bring to you. So I have some things to show you about the garden and then see what you think. So, I was looking around and I was noticing these beautiful long beans thinking, you know what, I could really use that for a snack. So I picked a couple of these long green beans. Look how flexible they are. They remind me of that straight line that Mr. Coulter showed you. But they're so flexible they could also be that curved line that Mr. Coulter showed you. So I really love it when in first grade when we talk about these things because I can just go up to the garden and see all these things that he's teaching right there in the garden. And as I looked around some more, I found myself very attracted to these leaves. And when Mr. Coulter and I were looking at leaves with you yesterday, he was doing what he likes to do is to see how soft they are. And I found out with this leaf, the top is very soft, the, the colorful part. But the underside, not as soft. And once again, if you look at the underside of the leaf, it has this branching pattern that reminds me of other things. What does that remind you of? Think about what that reminds you of. This is not a flower, but it's so colorfully attractive. Like one, I decided to pick it and show you. And the one thing I really love about this plant really, really love is running my fingers down the stem because it is not a round stem. It's a square stem. Straight lines make up that stem. And Auntie Jackie, I, I know that there are some other plants that have square stems. and I'm thinking they must be kind of cousins with each other. Are you thinking, do you know which plant I'm talking about? I'm thinking of a square stem that I know on the peppermint. Yes. Yeah. And they could be cousins, but there's some, there's some science that takes over when we talk about cousins, and we have to look at the flowers. It may, may and the leaves remind us, and the stems remind us, but I'm, I'm going to go from there, and next time I go in the garden, I'm going to get some of these flowers, and then I'll look at the peppermint flower, and the coleus flower, and see. I'll bring some of those for you tomorrow. Another thing I found in the garden, to my happy delight, was one of these berries. We have some berries that have made their way into the garden. They have been growing and growing on their stems. And it's a bit squished right now because it was traveling with me. 
Does that remind you of something that you've eaten? We can grow these right here in Hawaii. And if we work on it nicely in the garden, we'll be snacking on these. But who else do you think snacks on these? The birds, maybe? They will eat these, take them to their babies, and the seeds fall to the ground. Sometimes when it goes through their body and they poop it out, or sometimes they drop it by mistake when they're trying to bring it to their babies. I think that's how the plant got in the garden, because I didn't plant it, and now it's there. Is that one a thimbleberry? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thimbleberry. Yeah, it has that's a what lot I call of it, small, small little fruits all clumped together, and we call it a berry. It's getting squishy now, isn't it? It's cousins with the raspberry. It's cousins with the blackberry. And when I came in and showed you my box, this is something that I want to encourage you guys to do. When we sent your materials home for gardening, you got a folder with directions. And in your folder is a colorful sheet of paper that says scavenger hunt, create your bo garden box. Now, if you can read, these words will tell you what to do. But if you need help looking at those words, get somebody in your house to help you and you can go around getting things. Now before, if they don't have time right away and you have some time, go ahead and look in your recycle or look in your, in your closet for a shoe box or a box like this and you can decorate it. Auntie Cheyenne decorated this for me, look at that. She likes to do art. So she even put a feather on here. And inside your box, you will collect the things from your scavenger list. So you're going to get a couple of jars with lids. I've already been collecting things in my jars. And here's another jar with a lid. You're going to look for a water bottle or an old juice bottle that's plastic that we can make holes in the lid. And you're going to um, decorate your box. And let's just see. Oh, you want to rinse a, a, a can, a metal can. You want a spoon, an old spoon, but you gotta ask first if you can use that spoon. And if you have a plastic lid, I forgot my, oh, you know what, I can show you with this. An extra cup lid like this, we're gonna use that to catch water from our plants. And when you come back to this list, oh, and two interesting things and wonderful things you find in nature. So that's up to you. So you're gonna be able to come in with your garden box and look at those things with your family. One last thing I wanted to share. Yesterday when Mr. Coulter and I were looking at those leaves, I also showed you a plant that had no more leaves. Someone had eaten all the leaves off of it, and I said, I'm gonna check that out. Well, I went into the garden where those leaves were missing. I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find worms, I couldn't find caterpillars, I couldn't find leaves. And then I looked up onto the tree, and in the tree, I saw this hanging. It's kind of like that. And I'm thinking this could be part of my history. So I'm going to let you guys wonder about that, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. This one's very brown, and there's some tiny, small, round piece hanging there. What is that? This is like a lot of things going on. And if I look even closer, I don't know if you guys could see it. Look closer. Is that a spider? Are those, is that a spider egg laying on top of my chrysalis? Think about that. Go ahead and look in your garden. There's so many things that you're gonna find and there's so many things that I don't even know about yet. But your practice, and maybe you can call it your homework, is to go out in your garden, look around, get yourself ready for garden time by making up a nice box and um, Think about the berries and the foods that you eat and where they came from. And one more piece, do not be afraid to rub things on your skin to see if they, what kind of um, texture they are. Now, your mom and dad um, might go out with you before you start rubbing things on you um, because some leaves may give you an irritation, but wonder, you know, and even if you don't rub it and put it in your box, you can at least look at it. Thank you so much, Auntie Thank Jackie. You. I'm yes. glad you guys are on here now. Bye. Namaste. Namaste. All right. So you can see this flower base here. And I'm remembering that Auntie Jackie brought us some flowers. 
and I'll just use those for our little math story just now. So you, I think it would be difficult for you to count all of them because I can see some of the smaller ones that are a little squished underneath there. And I see in the bottom, the first ones she brought us were the zinnias, and she brought this many. I'll show you one more time. She brought this many. And if you were looking closely, you saw that that was five, because you know you have five fingers. She brought us those five, and then she brought us one more. So we had the five, and then she brought us one more. And then she brought us one more, and then she brought us two more. So we had five, and then one, and then actually she brought two, and then one. But anyway, that's the additional ones she brought. She brought this many to start, and then she brought this one, and this, and this. So how many is that all together? How many flowers are there here? And I'm not even counting the coleus, because that's just leaves so far, as she said. So I would say she brought this many, that would be five, and then six, seven, eight, and then nine. So I see nine flowers, and if we count the coleus, then we have a nice round ten. And I could give five to one of my friends, and five to another friend, and I would have none left, would I? But at least somebody would have five flowers, and somebody else would have five flowers, and hopefully they would be happy. All right, so now we are going to draw our queen bee. If you remember, the queen bee helped uh, poor the youngest uh, brother, uh, who they insulted by calling him Dumbling. Uh, but it turns out he was so kind that he won the day, didn't he? He solved the mysteries of the missing pearls, and he solved the mystery of the missing key with the help of the ducks, and finally the uh, queen bee came over and found which princess was the one who had eaten a little bit of honey before she had fallen into her enchanted sleep. And so we're going to draw uh, a bee, and, um, and she's going to, she's actually going to look a little bit similar to this. So you need your main lesson book, you need all your crayons out, and I'm going to bring this in a little bit and focus it on the area where I will be drawing. Like most insects have, maybe all insects have three parts of their body. And the bee, I'm going to make this part of her body first, down toward the bottom of my page. And I'm even going to go ahead and put her stinger on here, and I'm going to put it leaning a little bit sideways, and I think you'll figure out what, why that is later, because she's the queen. She's the queen bee. If you know your letters already, you might recognize that that's already a Q, isn't it? I need to move this over a tiny bit. So that I have room on the sides. Don't worry if it's too late for you to do that, but... Okay, there's her stinger. And then she's got this middle part of her body, and then she's got her head. And the middle part of the body is where her legs come off. And I'm going to draw these in yellow lightly. And up here, she's got a couple of antenna, antennae, two antennas. And now I'm going to take my yellow block crayon, and I'm going to shade in the inside. But I'm working lightly because I'm going to go over that. 
with some black, make some stripes. Okay, and now I'm going to take my yellow again and fill it up here. If I go too fast, you can always pause this video. I'm going to draw her big eyes. I'm also going to use black for those. Her eyes take up a lot of space. They've got very interesting eyes. Very different eyes from us. Special kind of bee eyes. Now the wings. I'm going to take a different color. It doesn't really matter too much what it is. I think I'll try this gold color first and then I'll switch maybe to an orange if it doesn't work. And I'm going to draw her wings. And her wings start here also from this middle part of her body. You'd think they might come from here, but they don't. And her wings, oh, I forgot to show you the drawing that I made to start with. I'll put that one up as well, so that you can see what it looks like on paper in my drawing. I, I think I wish I had put her in the middle of the page, but I didn't. Let's see if she can fit right there. Now, I'm going to draw a wing, and I'm going to draw it a little bit differently than you might expect. I'm going to go like this, and again, maybe you know why I did that. You can see through them pretty well, that's why I did her legs first, and now I'm coloring them in. You can be using orange, I even considered uh, using uh, blue, go lightly with blue. And I shaped it like this because it's a bee. She's a bee. And then there are these veins here, or I'm not sure, they're probably not really called veins. They probably have a different name. But there are these sections in her wings, a little bit like a leaf, but they seem different. In a leaf, they are called veins. And I'm going to exaggerate one of the veins a little bit and bring it all the way down like that so that you might notice that I've hidden inside this B wing the letter B. There it is. It's kind of leaning back a little bit. There's a b b back. It's leaning back. This is a big B, isn't it? B b big B. I don't think it's a bumblebee, but it could be a bumblebee. This one I was thinking more of a honeybee. And that's the main part of it, although I will do the wing on the other side, and I will put some background, perhaps a sky, um, and I put some flowers and grass on the bottom. And um, what, I, what I didn't do, which you, which you may like to do, is put a b -b border. I may like to put a border of some color all the way around the outside of the page, like that, on the very edge. So I'm on the very edge of my page, like that. And go all the way around, like that, all the way around. It's kind of like a picture frame. make it a little wider in this case, but all right, now I'm going to make the other wing. Oh, now I'm reminded of my form drawing, aren't I? Trying to do things similar on both sides, but of course, depending on what the bee is doing and many other things, you, she may not be exactly perfect on both sides. Most things are not perfectly symmetrical. That means the same on both sides. Most things are a little different on each side. And if I put that one here, that would be a, a backwards B. Oh, another good B word, but backwards. I have a backwards B here. So I'm not going to make that one as strong. I'm going to just do my little sections of her wing. I wonder. 
I do wonder why, how they grow and why they are in little sections like that. I bet it helps though, because if some little part gets damaged, then there's already a, a kind of a, a, a way to block that damaged part off from some other part. The little hole gets poked in one part. All right, so that is our drawing for the day. Um, and what else was I going to do? I think we're just going to talk about things that rhyme with B. So the other thing, that, the things that rhyme with B, I think anything that, that ends with an E sound, B, and what's this, my knee, and I open the door with a key, of course. Where's my little stool? Um, and I, um, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, I like to be myself. That's a good thing to be, isn't it? I can be myself. Um, I'm not a bee, but I can be myself. So here we have the cue for the queen, right there, cue. And I'm gonna sneak a little U in there because Q is almost always, pretty much always, accompanied by her little helper, the U. Qu -qu queen, queen bee. And tomorrow we will write the word queen bee on this page. And we will also form the letter B. So the letter B I will form right now so that you can begin to practice. Oh, b b begin to practice. Oh, B is very useful, isn't it? B begin and backwards and bumpy ride and b b b b. Oh, what if it's not small? It's b b big and many, many other words. B boing, boing, boing. That's the sound a ball makes when it bounces on the ground, I think, isn't it? How about um, the sound a bell makes? Bong. Or it might say ding dong, I suppose, but that's not a b, b. That's a d, d, different. Here's a B. Okay, so straight line, you are very good at drawing straight lines. And this one has two curves in it. A B is formed like this. Here's the middle of my line, right? About right there. So I'm going to make a big curve that starts at the top and goes to the middle, and I'm going to make another big curve and practice my b, b, b. So that is letter B. I would like you to practice that in your notebook, and then tomorrow we will put it in the main lesson book. B book. Oh yes, another one. So I think this lesson is complete, and I will now read a story about the alphabet, and you remember um, Tiptoes Lightly, the fairy, and this is a book by the same author called The Alphabet, and <clears throat> there's a little uh, boy named Tom Nutcracker. Oh, you'll hear the story in just a moment. I don't need to tell you about it because it's self-explanatory. It explains itself. The Alphabet with Pinecone and Pepper Pot, with the help of Tiptoes Lightly and Farmer John, learned Tom Nutcracker and Juneberry their letters. Taught them their letters or learned them their letters is kind of a different way of saying that, isn't it? Um, Farmer John <clears throat> lives in the countryside and he always needs his glasses to read. That's not what it says. Farmer John lives in the countryside with his two children, Tom Nutcracker and Juneberry. His farm li lies near snowy mountains. You can see their snowy peaks glistening in the sunlight during the day and in the moonlight during the night. Flowing through the farm is running river. It is born high in the snowy mountains and flows first as a rivulet, then as a brook, then as a creek, splashing and dashing down the rocky slopes until it runs into the valley. There it slows down and meanders through Farmer John's meadows and fields and enters the forest. Just before Running River enters the forest, an oak tree stands on a grassy knoll. The tree is huge and old and beautiful. High in the branches hangs an acorn this acorn looks like any other acorn until you are close to it. Then you will notice that it has two windows and a door. 
Inside lives a fairy called Tiptoes Lightly. Her proper address is <clears throat> Miss Tiptoes Lightly of the sky blue dress and golden wings. Her acorn house, the great oak tree, Farmer John's farm near the village of Fairest Oaks between the snowy mountains and the sea. If you follow Running River into the forest, you'll find different folk, two of whom are gnomes called Pinecone and Pepperpot. They live beneath an old pine tree. They wear mossy green jackets and pants, red boots with curling up toes, and pointy red hats with a sparkle on top. They also have long, important beards. That's all you need to know for this story. Chapter one, Pinecone, whoopsie, Pinecone and Pepperpot begin to help. Um, decide to help. It happened when Tom was six. That's when it happened. Tom Nutcracker was about to go to school to learn his ABCs and Pinecone and Pepperpot decided to help. Tom is going to school, said Pinecone. That's next month. That's right, said Pepperpot. He's going to learn his ABCs and XYZs. And his LMNOPs too, said Pinecone, but without getting them mixed up, that would be terrible. Definitely terrible, agreed Pepperpot, nodding his head so that the tip of his pointy hat danced about. He'd spell Tom as Mott, or Juneberry as Nujrerby, or Pinecone as Nepitnok, said Pinecone, frowning, or Pepperpot as Prepeptop, said Pepperpot, looking worried. I think we'll have to help, said Pinecone. Otherwise, it'll be a disaster, a huge disaster, agreed Pepperpot. Quick, do something, said Pinecone. You do something, said Pepperpot. It's your problem, too. I don't know what to do, said Pinecone, pulling on an earlobe. Me neither, said Pepperpot, twirling the end of his beard round and round. I know, said Pinecone, suddenly brightening. We'll teach Tom his letters before he goes to school. That would way the school won't get him mixed up. That's a good idea, said Pepperpot, but how will we teach him? The gnomes tugged at their long beards and scratched their heads. They twirled their thumbs and shuffled their red boots. Suddenly they stopped. Their pointy caps shot up, the tips sparkling brightly. They grinned at each other. We'll ask Tiptoes, they cried, and off they ran. Tiptoes agrees. Tiptoes lightly was at home. She was sitting in her acorn house, hanging high in the branches of the great oak tree. She was enjoying the view. Suddenly, someone knocked at her door. They knocked loudly. Knock, 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 said one knock. Knock, 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 said the other knock. Tiptoes opened the door. She was about to say hello when the gnomes rushed in. You have to help, said Pinecone, quickly, or it'll be a disaster. A huge disaster, said Pepperpot. Tiptoes opened her mouth again. Tom is going to school, said Pinecone. He has to know his ABCs, his LMNOPs, and his QRSTs. And his UVWXYZs, added Pepperpot. If he doesn't know how to do them properly, he'll spell Tom as Mott, or Pepperpot as Prepeptop, or Pinecone as Nepinoak, said Pinecone. Even Tiptoes lightly as Toespit Thiley. Tiptoes' eyes opened wide. That would be a terrible disaster, said Pinecone. A monstrous disaster, said Pepperpot. Tiptoes opened her mouth again. So we're going to teach him, said Pinecone, so the school doesn't get him mixed up. Definitely, said Pepperpot, that's what we're going to do. We're going to teach Tom his letters. And we are going to do it now, said Pinecone. We're not going to waste a minute. Bye, said Pepperpot, marching out the door. Bye, said Pinecone, following after him and leaving the door wide open. They marched off along the branch. Tiptoes closed the door and waited. A moment later, there was a knock. It was softer this time. Tiptoes opened the door. It was the gnomes. Uh, we forgot to ask you how we can teach Tom his letters, said Pepperpot. Tiptoes opened her mouth. Please tell us, said Pinecone, dropping to his knees. Pretty please, begged Pepperpot, wiping his cap, whipping his cap off and kneeling too. Tiptoes opened her mouth to speak and closed it again. She smiled. Yay, cried the gnomes, jumping up. Hooray, 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 they sang and did a little dance. Out they waltzed, excited and chattering. Tiptoes sighed and closed the door. She folded her arms and waited. A moment later, the door creaked open a tiny bit. Pinecone and Pepperpot stuck their heads into the house. They looked sheepish. What are we supposed to do, they asked. 
chapter three, the alphabet song. I believe we will leave it right there. First grade and save the next chapter for tomorrow. Now, I'm going to read one more chapter. <clears throat> the Alphabet Song, Chapter 3. Pinecone and Pepperpot were getting ready for Tom Nutcracker and Juneberry. They were coming for a singing lesson. Tiptoes had told the gnomes to teach them the Alphabet Song. Let's practice the, the song, said Pinecone. You sing first. And no, you sing first, said Pepperpot. The gnomes looked at each other. Let's sing it together, they said. Ahem, <clears throat> said Pinecone, clearing his throat. Ahem, <clears throat> said Pepperpot, clearing his throat too. Well, go on then, said Pinecone. You go on, said Pepperpot. Okay, said Pinecone, I'll go first. And he began to sing. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABC. Let's go fishing in the sea. You don't go fishing after singing the alphabet, said Pepperpot. You do so, said Pinecone. And besides, it's better than washing the dishes or digging a ditch. No, it's not, said Pepperpot. I like washing dishes. Then how come you never do them, asked Pinecone. Pepperpot scratched his head. I, I, I forget, he said. I thought so, said Pinecone. What alphabet song do you sing then? Ahem, said Pepperpot, clearing his throat again and puffing up his chest. Ahem, ahem, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my A to Z. Won't you come and bend your knee? <laughs> bend your knee, said Pinecone. What's that supposed to mean? It means to come dancing, said Tiptoes, appearing out of nowhere. Are you ready, said Tom and June. Tom, oh, Tom and June will be here in, in a second, said Tiptoes. A moment later, the children came running through the forest. Juneberry was carrying... Uh, a school satchel on her back. We're here, they cried, flopping down in the leaves. They'd run the whole way from the house. We brought our sketchbooks, colored pencils, and crayons, said Juneberry. Tiptoes told us to. Wonderful, said Pinecone. The first thing we're going to do is teach you the alphabet song. The real one, said Pepperpot, giving Pinecone a look. We already know it, laughed Tom and June, in a, and in high, clear voices they sang, A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my A B C. Next time, won't you sing with me? Lovely, lovely! Cried Pinecone, clapping his hands. Much better than bending your knees, and much, much better than fishing in the sea. Said Pepperpot. Children looked puzzled. They had no idea what the gnomes were talking about. Now what? Asked Tom Nutcracker. Tiptoe said you were going to teach me to write the alphabet. That's right we are, said Pinecone. I can write my name, said Tom, and he drew a T-O-M in the dirt with a stick. I can write my name too, said Juneberry, chiming in, and she wrote J-U-N-E. That's wonderful, said Pepperpot. We're going to teach Tom the whole alphabet properly. And me too, exclaimed Juneberry, miffed. She was a year and a half younger than Tom, but insisted on doing everything he did. Of course you can join him, Juneberry, said Pinecone, and learn the first letter we have to, and to learn the first letter we have to go to Running River. And that, first grade, is where we will leave it for tomorrow. All right, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next time.